Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falses are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. The world, the culture we are living in today is essentially the making, the creation of Barack Obama. Aside from the obvious point that Biden was his vice president and that Hillary was picked to succeed him, there's much more at work in all of this. But perhaps most disturbing, certainly for Catholics about Obama's world, is the high degree to which leading Catholics assisted him and still support at least his vision. The simple truth is Obama won the 2008 Catholic vote with a whopping 54%. He didn't manage that on his own, far from it. And this is one reason why it's so important for faithful Catholics to understand their role, their necessity to be involved at all levels. Obama's progressivism got ushered in by phony Catholics who are essentially Marxists. And they populated Catholic universities, political offices, think tanks, and other influential positions, all while draping themselves in religious sounding language and pushing the need for taking care of the poor. Most of the names of this corrupt group of Catholics, this core of corrupt Catholics, most people probably wouldn't recognize. Fred Rotondaro, for example, is the chair of Catholics in Alliance for the Common Good, you've never heard of that, and is a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress. Fred, good Catholic that he is, wrote all the way back in 2010, note the year, 2010, that gay sex comes from God. He made his observation, even a decade before James Martin did, in an article for the Huffington Post entitled, the world needs a new Vatican Council. Hmm, synod on synodality, anyone? Then there is the largely unknown Tom Pirello, a former U.S. congressman from Virginia. He co-founded Catholics in Alliance for the Common Good, the same group that Fred Gaysek's new Vatican Council, Rotondaro, is chair of. When Tom lost his congressional seat, he just mushed into the great shadowy Catholic cabal of Marxist-minded Catholics and did a different job. But in 2015, phony Catholic John Kerry, Obama, again Obama's Secretary of State, he just tapped him to oversee a U.S. government agency with a $50 billion budget aimed at coercing poor nations to get on board with the program. Another instrumental group in getting Obama elected by subverting Catholic teaching and making it okay for Catholics to vote for Barack is Catholics United, founded by Chris Corzin. You've never heard of him and you've never heard of his group. Back in the heat of the 2008 campaign, Corzin published a book entitled A Nation for All, How the Catholic Vision of the Common Good Can Save America from the Politics of Division. Those who pay careful attention to these things, like we do here at Church Militant, will note such things as specific language. The left is brilliant at creating new vocabulary terms or simply hijacking old ones and investing them with brand new meaning. You will recall that the common good became a big time catchphrase of Obama's, even as just 10 months later, following Corzin's book release, as President Obama, he walked onto the stage at Notre Dame and droned on about that theme, the common good. See, unschooled Catholics have no idea what that term means, but since it sounds good and they're all hearing it everywhere, well, they sign on, uncritically, of course. And notice who wrote the foreword to the book, Pennsylvania Senator Robert Casey, yet another Catholic politician left completely undisciplined by U.S. bishops. On close examination of how this scheme works now, there are multiple partnerships, things all working together, showing how all this mind rot gets into the public consciousness with the aid of church leaders and their phony, unsanctioned Catholic influencers, which are legion. It involves educators and political academic types that form think tanks and political action committees, places like Catholics United and Catholics in Alliance for the Common Good. These groups produce the propaganda, the arguments distorting Catholic teaching. They are the ones who publish the books and write the articles in mainstream outlets. 
the think tanks, always coming up with initiatives, the talking points, and all of that, which then get carried far and wide by their surrogates on the ground down in the trenches. Then there is the next level, groups like the Tides Foundation and the ARCA Foundation. They are the money funnelers, political 527 groups specifically set up to make sure the money keeps flowing to the propaganda groups because normal Americans don't give money for that kind of stuff. Then there are the real people behind all of this, the George Soros crowd, but by no means, not just him, part of the shock troops in the Catholic world, however, the ones on the ground executing the same-minded policy are the likes of, for example, Kathleen Caveni. She is currently a distinguished scholar at phony Catholic Boston College, where her bio in part reads, quote, a scholar, they're always a scholar, a scholar who focuses on the relationship of law, religion, and morality, serves as the Daryl and Juliet Libby Professor at Boston College, a position that includes appointments in both the theology department and the law school. She is the first faculty member to hold such a joint appointment. Kaveny regularly teaches contract law to first-year law students. She gets to pollute their minds when they're 18. She also teaches a number of seminars that explore the relationship between theology, philosophy, and law, such as faith, morality, and law, or mercy and justice and complicity. In the heat of the Obama 2008 campaign, she was one of the leading Catholic apologists for Obama. But after all of that, perhaps the most notorious of the sellouts was Doug Kamek. He was a Republican Catholic who nevertheless came out and endorsed Obama in 2008. He wrote articles and granted interviews rationalizing how Catholics could vote for Obama despite the abortion issue. He made the completely nutty argument that the issue of wages, health care, and the Iraq war and Obama's position on them should tip the scales in Obama's favor for Catholics despite his abortion stance. Kamek's sellout, which came in an article in the Marxist publication Slate, drew massive eyeballs and controversy, but served its purpose in helping persuade Catholics that Obama was actually a pretty decent guy whose child-killing policies, well, they could be overlooked because he was Catholic on so many other things. Kamek's pro-Obama position is summed up in this one-liner he gave in an interview with the Chicago Tribune. He said, one of the things I kept discovering was that Obama was sounding more Catholic than most Catholics I know. For his treachery, Kamek was made U.S. Ambassador to Malta by Obama in 2009. Now, why does all of this matter? Because these people are still around. They're still working to undermine the church and the faith, destroying the faith. They haven't gotten, they have gone, got gone anywhere, not by a long shot. And they are echoes of this very same filth spewed by James Martin and company. Filth that the U.S. bishops and their staffs simply do not care to confront for a number of reasons. So why does all of this matter to you? Because you have to care. But you have to understand not just big 60,000 foot concerns, but how this all works at colleges, at seminars, and parish retreats, and guest speakers being brought in, and articles being published, and TV interviews being granted, and so forth. All of it. It's a war conducted by a few generals, yes, but it's carried out by traitors all over the church. It's Obama's world right now. They need confronting. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.